So I fuck up the start. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome everybody to history happening at Nostalgia Battlefield day number two. It is the winner bracket semifinal. It is the rest of the loser bracket and it is Grubby versus Moon. The most intense rivalry in Warcraft 3 history is continuing in 2017 in Harbin, China in a team battle for $45,000. We expected to see this battle, but we didn't expect to see it in the winner bracket. Both teams with upsets, Grubby and Moon leading their team. It, well, actually they didn't really do anything, but doesn't matter. They have their team ready in the winner bracket semifinal. And that means the winner of this clan war will go into the finals tomorrow. So the stakes are high and uh, everybody is so un incredibly excited about this I cannot wait like it's 4 a.m. here in Germany thank you everybody uh, thanks to everybody who tuned in very early or staying up very late for this yesterday we had 12 hours of Warcraft so my voice is a little raspy already but uh, I hope we're gonna see greatness here again the second semi-final is gonna be uh, Team TH versus Team Remind and in the loser's bracket, Infi is waiting, but we'll go into that a little later because uh, I think everything is a little delayed. It's a Chinese tournament after all, so that's what happens there. Uh, pretty natural that there's a delay. And there's going to be an interview of Moon and Grubby on stage first. So, I hope this is getting better. Um, so, yeah, that's what we can expect to be a little delay. So, <clears throat> get some breakfast. <coughs> and uh, just enjoy yourself a little. I'm gonna open the Chinese stream to see what's going on there. The castles are already in the lobby. The first map is gonna be Ancient Isles. Alright, do you... Zip. More than 200 people already. This is crazy. At this uh, early hour. But yeah, Remo is not here with me today. He has to work, so I'm going to do it alone. And that's going to be very hard. I need all your support, uh, but I think we can do that. Okay, there's only trailers running, so we don't miss anything. Let's recap yesterday a bit. For those of you who haven't seen it, uh, it's all up on YouTube. I think one game is missing, but I'm not so sure. So let's start with the teams that we have. Team Lin is already out of this competition. And Team Lin was Lin, Life and Alice. Uh, on paper, a very strong team, but they didn't really fit together as it seemed. And Lin, especially disappointing, losing to Shishi and losing to... Uh, who else was it? Colorful, of course. So, the world champion is out already, but we remain with uh, seven more. The loser's bracket is going to be played at the same time as Grubby vs. Moon. Uh, so, yeah, that, those are the teams. Grubby, WFZ, and Joshishi. There was a little mini game yesterday to choose uh, or to pick who has the first draft. And it was uh, kind of like the fun map, the weakest link. So you, you had to guess unit responses. And Grubby came out on top, picking WFZ as his first pick and Joshishi as his second pick. So. Very, very strong team altogether. Of course, Grubby the weakest kept them of them all. But yesterday, he tried a tower rush. That didn't work at all. A lot of timings were fucked up and he forgot a few things. It almost seemed like he's nervous. But uh, maybe he'll play a more standard game today. He has an opponent, I think, if he's going to be seated first again, uh, that he can beat because Team Moon consists of, of course, the fifth race himself, Chamiko, and a totally unknown Night Elf player, Karma. Karma won a game yesterday against a guy called Kira that was uh, the battle of the unknown. But Karma, I think, is on a level where Grubby can shine, and it's Orc versus Night Elf, which uh, he should feel pretty familiar with, as it was uh, the matchup that he practiced the most back then because of the long rivalry with Moon himself. It is... Yeah, it is history repeating here. Um, when I grew up, I was a Warcraft fan very early on, like when I was 13 years old, I guess, 14 years ago. Oh, by the way, 
We have an interview, so let's cut this. Moon and Grubby on one stage. Hello,欢迎两队的队员来到我们的舞台上。那么他们昨天都是非常棒的战绩，击败了对手，进入胜者组。好，那我们简单的来进行一个赛前访问。首先想问一下Grubby，呃，他和莫恩是老对手，也是
But it is karma. Karma, the seed of yesterday as well, the guy who defeated Kira, but apart from that, completely unknown. And it's about to start. It is about to start. No delay. This is very, int uh, yeah, very surprising. To me, at least. And yeah, Grubby is gonna open the day, everybody. Of course, the legendary orc. And I hope that he takes it home. And the next seed is gonna be Moon, then. Because everybody wants to see this game. The entire Warcraft world is watching. And I need to put up the clock. Uh, okay, so our clock is back. <laughs> okay, Grubby says uh, maybe he needs some luck, but he feels confident. Um, have fun to all the viewers out there. So Mr. Schenker is in sending some some love to the European and Western audience. 500 people in the middle of the night. This is absolutely nuts. This is the magic of Grubby that only he can create. In the Western scene, of course. So we're ready to start this. We're just waiting for the Chinese television signal. And yeah. We have high hopes that Grubby can take this. Karma, his opponent here today, is a guy that nobody knows. We had this tier list before, and he is definitely in the D tier, the lowest of all. He had a very easy group. Even the Chinese guys don't know him. Grubby said it as well. Uh, he wanted to know a bit about his opponent, or his m most likely opponent, and no one could tell him anything about Karma. He's a night elf. He beat uh, Kira yesterday, but that's all we know. The first map, as we mentioned, is going to be Ancient Isles. Uh, it's the same map as yesterday where Grubby played against Alice and lost with a Tower Rush because all his timings were kind of off and it seemed like he was a little nervous. But today, maybe he's more used to the scenery. And as we see Kiao Lin and TD, shout out to China. We go into the next game. Grubby! There we see him. Will we see the magic of the open mouth again? We definitely hope so. That's his opponent, Karma. A Night Elf player that nobody in the world knows. We jump in game into Nostalgia Battlefield, day number two. Here we go. I have to adjust this overlay thing. We are good to go. Just need the clock, right? That's a good thing. It's early, guys. Give me a break. Oh, I see Boca. Nice to see you in chat. Alright, is this better now? No, what the fuck? Yeah, I should have prepared this, right? <laughs> I know. This is better. There we go. And the clock is on. So we're good to go. Grubby this time starting in the bottom right. Uh, yesterday he was starting in the upper right. And maybe that's a good sign for him. All right, let's start. It is, of course, a Blade Master. That's what we always see from Grubby. Farseer times are over. His opponent, Karma, would be a great surprise if he wouldn't start with a Demon Hunter. But no, nope, no surprise here as well. He's starting things off very easy. Did he see the game yesterday? Most likely. Does he expect Grubby to go for a Tower Rush again? I don't know. The shop is already 
here uh, in the base, and that's a sign for <coughs> a more standard game than we saw yesterday. Because then, of course, if you want to go for a tower rush, you would like to have your shop close by. And it's a very fast tag! It's a one burrow tag by Grubby. Uh, very, very risky because you limit yourself to only one grunt. And of course, uh, it's easier to have the two burrow tag, but it's faster. And therefore, you can catch up with a night elf tag. But yeah, he needs some more resources and waiting. Uh, he's waiting for the wisp. So the tag is only starting now for Karma. Good start for Grubby. The first item here was uh, the Ring of Protection. That's also pretty bad for the Chinese Night Elf. Grubby on the other side with a perfect drop with the Circuit of Nobility. Town Portal has been sold already. And... Yeah, he's up for a good start. Kama on the other side stole uh, the Circlet of Grubby. Oh, that's nice. Sending out a Grunt to harass at a very good timing. To get this moon well uh, knocked four, down, but on the other side, the demon hunter wants to create some trouble here as well. Grubby's base seemed to be walled off. Uh, he might be a little afraid of the tier two push that is coming with the beast master, with the quill beast. You all know the drill. But if you create uh, only small little traps in the base, you can block it with peons and yeah, ghouls uh, and, and uh, grunts. So this should be defendable. Grubby has to be careful about his. Grunt here, the engine of war, pretty damn mighty, but look at this, this is an easy target to get Karma's supply stuck later on. Demon Hunter now, oh, Grubby's second burrow, he, uh, uh, third burrow, he cannot lose this, but he does! He has the time, for, uh, or the supply, for the second hero, and now the Demon Hunter is trapped, and there's no staff of teleportation, he has him stuck there, the Grunt will definitely... Uh, be too strong for this Demon Hunter, so this results in a town portal for sure. 350 gold gone, and that weakens the upcoming tier 2 push um, from Karma, which is usually coming to delay the orcs, tier 2 buildings, Beastery and Spirit Lodge, which is very natural. Will you let him die? No, Town Portal here. Well done. It's, uh, yeah, Grubby's off to a good start, I might say. After 4 minutes and 30 seconds in this game, his... Mm, Ah, oh, his Orc is a little late. He should definitely start a second, a third one again. Uh, there's the Spirit Lodge, there's the Beastry, and the second hero will be the Torrent Chieftain most likely. There we go! And now, he really needs to start the Burrow, otherwise he's supply stuck. Or will the Blade Master carry this alone? He stole the Staff, I guess, <coughs> to create some trouble here. Tier 2, not really ready for Karma. Take some time, then the Entrance of Winter coming up. We all know uh, the matchup. Ooh, there it is. Okay, a little late, but it's alright. And Grubby, what a nice trick. The Beastmaster will spawn here. So if Karma is going for the Beastmaster now, he will be immediately surrounded. Grubby with the tricks. Uh, we saw this from Focus recently. And now he's opening it up. Ah, okay, he wants to bait it here. Without the beast master, you can't really go for the push, but the yeah, the beast tree is finishing. This is so good. There's no way in hell that Karma can do anything here. The grunt is blocking the entrance. The beast master is blocked. Can he go for a keeper of the grove? Yeah, he could. But everything from Karma is delayed, and now Grubby has achieved exactly what he wanted, and he surrounds the Demon Hunter! Oh my god, this is glorious play by the Dutch player, and he has the staff out here. Ah, okay, ah, okay, I didn't see the staff, so he, he can escape now, and losing the Grunt, then it's not so glorious, but... Uh, Alright, has to force this now. Ensnare not ready yet, Raiders are coming, but the delay... The delay for Karma's play is so big, and he was overwhelmed a little, the Engines of Wind are late. While Grubby is going for raiders and walkers already, building the usual orc army that we used to see from uh, for years and years and years. The problem is, Blade Master's level one. The problem is, TC is level one. He needs high level heroes. He needs critical strike level two, uh, windwalk level two to roam around, and of course the biggest weapon, um, shockwave level two and three. The archer is hurt. Good scouting by Karma. did he find there? Oh, Book of the Dead. This can be horrible for Grubby and this might be the opening that Karma needs. He has to go immediately to Grubby's base, spawn the Book of the Dead here and kill as much as possible. 
Yeah, I think he is doing that right now. What? But the one is expiring. He needs to kill the Quilby so no one can staff on it. This build is far away, I think. This build for the walkers is far, far away. And so he can't dispel the Book of the Dead. This is disastrous and this is ungodly unlucky for Grubby. His Orc photos will get wrecked. You see all the skeletons. There's the walker, but he's an initiate. He gets uh, the dispel only on tier 2 with the adept upgrade. But Grubby is going for his beloved base race. How much damage can he do? It there. Yeah, the base race is on. Of course, Karma's in a better position here with all the summons. He has to take care of the spirit walker. No lumber for the adept upgrade. Grubby is supply stock already. Demon Hunter is defending at home. He has to kill this moon well, or at least, yeah, he leads two, I guess. Gets one talon. Shockwave on level one being used already to get rid of the wisps. And yeah, he's gonna lose the raider here too. Oh, no. Ah, yes, there you go. <clears throat> and Grubby is losing his last burrow as well. This is going to take forever to rebuild. No town portal, of course. He has to win this here in the base of Karma, where all the moon juice is, where the Tree of Eternity is helping. Fast tier 3 tech by him, though. But he can't do more damage. Ah, uh, from hero to zero, as it seems. Now the Blade Master is coming home with the staff, attacking the Beastmaster, who has no staff of, of teleportation, so maybe he can come back with a Beastmaster kill. But the Blade Master himself is low on mana. He's blocking himself with a peon, and there's no healing. The Blade Master of, of Grubby is gonna go down or is dying. This is yeah, that was a big mistake, unfortunately. And Karma is at the driving seat now. Grubby knows, damn, he's gonna push. And I need something. I need lumber. I need a lumber mill. I need healing. I need everything. Oh, can he get a grunt with the skeleton shots? Looks like it. No. <clears throat> okay, Grubby. 27 food. TC level 2. Alright, but that's not ideal. And he's supply stuck. He can't get the Blade Master back. This is horrendous. Without the primal weapon, how are you supposed to win this? Here comes the Boro, but that's gonna take forever until the first hero is back. On the other side, Karma, almost level 3. The Talons are coming, 5 at a time. Tinker is there as well. Everything is running smooth for Karma now since the drop of the Book of the Dead. Grubby needs Slumber for the Dispel. Master upgrade for the Talons is ready, as we can see. Cyclone is working against it. Takes forever, so this Raider kill buys some time for Grubby here. A player's forces are under but he needs even more. <clears throat> TC can creep with this. He bought a Mana Potion because, of course, he has a high uh, stack of gold. But he walks into a Cyclone. Counter surrounds. Counters around again. He cannot let this TC die. But on the other side, all his units are falling, escaping again. And he's baiting some of the Cyclones out. The mana of the Talons are, is falling. But now he closes it off with the Beastmaster. TC is dead for sure. And he calls for the GG. And yeah, Grubby losing also his second match in this tournament. We see the final moments here again. That was... Of course there were a few mistakes. But that was not really Grubby's mistake. That was... Uh, a Book of the Dead that breaks basically every orc's neck. We saw it in GCS at Focus vs. Romantic where Focus had a great, great lead. But then Romantic found the Book of the Dead and the game was over in, like, no time. Same faith for the King of Orcs here today. The Burrows are so vulnerable and this build is coming very late, so... 
It's no shame for Grubby to lose it. The early game was very good. Very cool uh, tricks from Grubby. Blocking the Beastmaster. And stuff like that. Trapping the Demon Hunter. But yeah, those are the final moments. Grubby against Night Elves. 0 to 2 now. But he can rely on his teammates, on Shishi and WFZ. There's the GG. And Karma, look how happy he is! Beating a legend on stage. What a feeling in his first offline event, in his first big event ever. And that's something I noticed yesterday, that the Chinese players in this team league are so much more emotional than in one-on-one -on -one competition. And yeah, Mr. Shenko is in... It wasn't enough, but bad luck hit. Ah, oh, what a shame. What a shame, but it's not over. Grubby will at least make uh, one more game here today. Or is that so? Yeah. If his team wins, he will play in the winner bracket final. If his team loses, he will go down to the loser bracket round two. And so all the Grubby fans out there, don't leave. We have uh, still awesome, awesome games here ahead of us. So... Karma stays alive. Grubby has to be replaced by either WFZ or Joshishi. Shishi guessed, uh, yesterday 3-0 against Team Lin. WFZ, does he want his chance or is he afraid of Chimiko? Chimiko is a human player in Moon's team and human versus undead seems to be superior. So I think Shishi is going to be uh, the pick here. By the way, we have the first donation of the day. Hampy87 was thinking of a funny message, but it's far too early in the morning, so just take my money, Neo. Thank you very much for the support. Also to Underwood Frank and Chris Germany 83 who have subscribed here. Thank you very much. Uh, very, very generous. But there was definitely improvement in Grubby's play compared to yesterday. Where he forgot all the timings. This time uh, everything went pretty smooth. Normal build, uh, no tower rush. And yeah, this was definitely... yeah, it's, it's promising for the next clan war that is coming. That should be against Team Fly or Team 120 then. <laughs> of course, everybody is hoping for uh, the match of 120 versus Grubby. But if that's gonna happen, we don't know. So, Team Moon is leading. The question is will the fifth race uh, step into the ring himself here today or not? Yesterday he didn't play. Chimiku did all the work for his team. Well, uh, Karma with the second map win. And then Chimiku picked up the pieces afterwards. Yeah, yesterday... Uh, this is Team Moon again. <coughs> Moon, Chimiku, Karma, Team Grubby. Well, Grubby is out now, but WFZ and Shishi. Very, very strong Chinese players. The second best undead in the world. And the former best night elf in China lost his spot quite a while ago, but all right. Someone tickering here. It doesn't seem like it. But yeah, this is the result of yesterday. Moon versus Team Infi. Kira losing to Karma, then Karma losing to Colorful, and Shimiko picking up the pieces. Grubby losing to Alice, then Shishi with an all kill against Alice, Lin, and Life. Team Fly in the loser bracket as well, after TBCBM, a relatively unknown undead, uh, did the all kill for him against Jupiter, which was no big surprise, but Killing Romantic and Fly definitely uh, looking out for him today. And Team 120 versus Team Remind. 120 was able to kill So in the Korean Orc, but Law Lied with a very strong performance on Echo Isles, and then he just had to take it home against 3 and soon. As I mentioned before, Lin is already out. Uh, colorful, the all kill against Life Alice and the master himself, Lin. I'm curious if we get up 
updates from China as um, Terra stand that indicates uh, Joshishi. Because why would you see the nun that on Terra Yeah, long day ahead of us once again. We have six clan wars, and yesterday it took us uh, about 12 hours to finish those clan wars, and we didn't even see one of them. Um, we had some power outages here, a computer had to be replaced, some driver issues, but I hope this will be better today. Almost 900 people already tuning in. Thank you very much. For all the follows and the subs and stuff like that. Oh. And it is not Shishi, it is WFZ. So maybe they want to take uh, Terranus away from Moon. So we will see an undead, Wufajen, the German, as they call him, will play here. And it's the first appearance for him. Yesterday he didn't have to play because she she did his job. Yeah, the Fly versus 1-2-0 clan war, um, I would like to see it as well, but I don't know if it's played now. I'm asking for it, but no response yet. On the other side, the winner of this clan war, Moon versus Grubby, will qualify or is qualified for the playoffs. So this is kind of more important. Why do they call him the German? Because his fiance, if I'm not mistaken, fiance or wife, uh, not sure about this, um, is in Germany. She's studying abroad and I think she's in Heidelberg or Hildesheim. I'm not so sure, but I think Heidelberg. And uh, he's actually a father or has a child with her. Yeah, you can see it here in the top right. WFZ, the winner of GCS finals in January. And the map is Terrana Stand. Surprise, surprise for me. Oh, I had the colors wrong, right? Idiot me. But it's early. I think you can forgive me. Okay, everything should be fixed. This is the third undead, no, the fourth undead stepping into the competition. Then we have seen all the undeads that are representing uh, the Scourge here. TBCBM doing incredibly well. The other two were very disappointing. 1 to 0 losing to Lolliad and uh, Shun as well. They are playing on 4x3, right? Yeah, that's true. Most of them do. Um, we show it in 16x9 because we have a hack. <laughs> that can also be used on W3 Arena, by the way, or is uh, in build in W3 Arena. 
So if you want to play Warcraft 3 in uh, native 16x9, then go go, tft.w3arena.net. Okay, so someone is tickering for uh, t uh, Liquipedia. Thank you very much, that helps a lot. So I think I have to do the job at read more again, right? Yeah, I have. I got neck pain since yesterday. <clears throat> I don't really know why. It's really hurt. And someone got advice on what to do against neck pain? It's 4.30 a.m. in Germany. Yep. It is. In China, it's, of course, 11 hours later. Uh, that means 11.30. So they had a good breakfast. Should be prepared. Live with it. <laughs> smoke weed? Well, if I, uh, if I smoke weed now, then I can't cast for 10 hours. What were the reactions when uh, Grubby picked Shishi? Well, <clears throat> at first, WFZ was picked by Grubby uh, because I advised him to do that and also Ugrilainen did uh, because it makes a lot of sense since uh, it is the, the uh, strongest player together with Lolliot, <clears throat> but there's a lot of Night Elves and a lot of Orcs here in this competition, so we advised to get... Uh, WFZ to get a big coverage of matchups and it said that WFZ was shocked that he got picked and of course nobody really wants to play with Grubby since he is the weakest team captain and everybody wants to win but uh, yeah Shishi was a little sad at first too but um, WFZ was really happy about it and said okay together we can do it and then uh, they saw Grubby play in the practice rooms and they said okay He's not that bad after all, so uh, let's rock. And it worked out well yesterday. And I think... Um, I think they have a good chance to go into the playoffs here. That's for sure. Rotate next slowly counterclockwise, then clockwise, then repeat one more time. I hope that helps. Okay, I'm trying to read the chat, but of course uh, it's a little hard. Oh, I Train Human is here. Shout out to him. If you like uh, History Warcraft content, then I Train Human is the YouTube channel for you. Um, I train Hume. That is it. So the players are not in the lobby yet. I don't know what's up. Maybe technical difficulties again. Why is no one talking about Moon? Yeah. Um, it, it, there's not too much hype anymore about Moon. He came back in December of 2015 for WCA, was their star player uh, there, but lost in the group stage. And after that, he never really came back to former glory. Mm. For example, compared to Lin, who was wiping the floor with the entire scene, uh, Moon only has one tournament win so far. That was PGL. But apart from that, not the greatest results. He played some amazing matches. Especially the one against Yumiko and Infi come to mind. 
So Moon versus Human is a spectacle to watch. But he didn't qualify for WCA. He even failed to qualify for GCS, which uh, is not that hard compared to the qualifier of WCA. He wasn't even in the playoffs at the Korean WCA qualifier, so that shows you the state of Moon currently. But uh, he took a break for one month, I guess. I heard he didn't stream in January, so maybe he practiced some stuff. Thank you, Lua, with bait for the sub. I hope you enjoy the replay pack later on. By the way, uh, subscribers, check your Twitch inboxes. The replays of yesterday are already there. And it looks like Team Fly took the lead. But at the same time, what's going on? Uh, I think Jupiter is playing three so the first match I think has started from fly versus so on to zero but we will go with this semi-final thank you funky monkey for this up nice nickname by the way Still no player in the lobby. Yesterday we had uh, huge delays. Is someone else streaming, by the way? Of course, Indra is streaming and Czech is streaming. No Russian, interestingly. Did you see Happy beating Fobby by switching races? No, I didn't. But good to see a lot of Russians here on the stream. <laughs> Neo against the world. Yeah, kinda. Remo l left me alone today. Ugri is leaving now. And I'm all alone. But it doesn't matter. I'm used to this. That sounds even sadder. Uh, yeah. All good. So I would love to show you the match of uh, 3 versus Jupiter. Oh, no, that, that isn't Jupiter. That must be Fly. Fly is seating himself first, interestingly. On Terranas, but uh, if I start this game now, then I can't watch the upcoming game of uh, WFZ, and we want to follow this clan war. <laughs> hey Nike, nice to see you, thanks for the comment. Neo just how he likes it, 900 men. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah, by the way, uh, TD, the caster here for China. The haircut... I don't know, man. Questionable for sure. And 
and the other guy, Kiao Lin, a big Liverpool fan. That's basically all we know about him. And that he's on every single tournament. The most famous caster in China, I guess. It's always strange because for online competition, there's Lao Fan, but he never appears on LAN tournaments. It's really weird. Thanks for the support, guys. It was really nice. Yesterday was already uh, one of the best streams in the past six months, I think. I was really happy with how everything went yesterday. Um, because the stream before yesterday, I hated my casting. Uh, I kind of hated the chat at that very day. And so I was a little pissed about the world and stuff. But yesterday was really good, and I hope we can continue this. I mean... Everybody who's awake now is kind of super dedicated to the scene. Um, so I'm thankful for you guys too. Thank you very much, uh, Resonant1, for the sub. Oh, and Tricycle Spider as well. The sub train. Whoop, whoop. Okay, they go into a little break. Uh, we will do the same. So I can take a break. It's, it's going to be a long day for all of us. Ten hours at least. So, uh, yeah, let's go into a little break here. WFZ versus Karma has started. And we're just waiting for NetEase TV to show it. So we will continue with the Grubby versus Moon Clan War. This was just a little intermission. The game is very young. It is on Terrana Stand. The laboratory on the bottom right is not even crept. So uh, we didn't miss anything. I'm updating the scoreboard already. And we will see another undead. With WFZ here in the next game. I will keep you up to date with the score of Team 120 versus Team Fly. If you want to watch it yourself, download NetEase. There is something like WAG TV in there, uh, so you can have your own camera. Okay, and the game starts in NetEase TV as well. So, finally some matches to be seen here. Need to fast forward a bit, and then we're good. Okay. A player's forces are under attack. That's it. WFZ versus Karma. WFZ the huge favorite in this match. As we mentioned before, Karma, nobody has ever heard of him. Still, he's taking two maps. One from Kira, one from Grubby. And he was so excited after his win against the legend from the Netherlands. Deciding to go for a Demon Hunter, very obvious. He didn't choose a skill yet. No mana burn, no evasion, which is weird. In Eddie's TV, you can see that. Halls of the Dead tech by uh, WFZ. Of course, he's going for DK. He's going for ghouls. Adding the fiends later on. And that use. This is an interesting map choice because it was WFZ's map choice but this is one of the best Night Elf maps. I think it's a uh, strategic choice to just take it away from Moon um, as Terranas is always great in basically every matchup for Night Elf. Grubby might not be the best 
player at the moment, or not at his level, but I think in, with the strategy, he can still help out as a coach and with ideas because his mind is still working. He's uh, one of the greatest masterminds that Warcraft ha has ever seen. Not the Zeppelin moves of Moon, not the tower rushes of Sky, but just a great gameplay in general. So, good amount of archers for Karma. One third of the tech is done. And WFC has the tech advantage here. Not forgetting about the graveyard. This looks pretty solid. His death knight is completely under leveled though. Of course, the demon hunter gets an edge through the engine of war creeping. His inventory looking okay. He has the boots. He can chase a bit. Uh, decided to go, of course, for mana burn and evasion. Five ghouls. It's not really that the ghoul gang push hit him hard. So Karma is uh, staying alive longer than maybe most expected. It would be a major upset if Karma could take the third map in his tournament life here. Okay. Yeah. Under he can't go for, for the attack, he can't go on killing uh, the archers because he needs the experience desperately. But Karma knows about this, scouted it with a wisp. Uh, it, uh, immolation would be great now. He's stealing the item from the little apprentice wizards. Takes like no time and has a good effort. So much HP now with two gauntlets. But he has to be careful about surrounds. He has no staff. And he doesn't want to lose the town portal again. As he did against Grubby. But Wufajen is ready with level 2. Has a coil now. So it's worth mana burning the DK. And that's why WFC throws his coils uh, prematurely to not get burned the entire thing to to make something out of his mana and if it's a little damage then it's okay t3 tech immediately no fiend yet no slaughterhouse yet good presence by karma it's a good timing can't risk to lose the slaughterhouse well it's five archers here karma did not forget about the hunters all increase game sound all right Double Engine of Lore, the usual stuff. And the Demon Hunter is not level 3. Panda has a follow-up. This is pretty standard. Except Rudan, everybody plays him. And now comes pressure. Naga means pressure. And the Night Elf is on the defending side. As he starts the shop creep, this is uh, not a good timing. But the Demon Hunter sees the ghoul, so he refrains from doing that and pulls back the archers. Nice timing for Karma, but his engines of lore, will they finish? I think they will. So he's doing way better than expected so far, or surviving way longer than expected. Panda is the first focus here, but the Moon Juice is keeping him alive, and WFC is almost losing two ghouls. Demon Hunter only joining now. This push is definitely defended. First Players fiends are coming. Are Slaughterhouse. And he, of course it was a fast tier 3 tech. He wants the Orb of Corruption. And use his power spike with Ghoul Frenzy and the Orb. And now it's time to creep the Panda up. Karma is surprising here for sure. With Dryads he gets a little map control in the mid game. But the hard thing for him is survive tier 3. Terranas can be a good worm map. Dep uh, depends on the fighting positions. No mana for Koi, but oh, the Demon Hunter. Is there a staff already? No, there's not. When the Volusion in some matchups, it's game breaking. In this one, not so much. No sacrificial pit, but ghoul frenzy, lich, and he's banking money for the orb of corruption now. DK is not level 3, that might turn into a problem, but as long as the heroes are alive and the invul potion suggests that, then it's good. So 
Slippers for the Demon Hunter always a good thing, and he has the time to creep his panda up. This will become a threat for one uh, for WFZ for sure. Not only the damage from the Breath of Fire, but the missed chance from Drunken Haze is what makes this guy so important. It's not pure damage, his right clicks are not that strong. But it's the spells makes them so great. Okay, big consumable dropping here at the Taskmaster. No chance for Karma to steal this. Good experience for the DK. And it's a uh, Wind of Mana stealing. It's the Panda had has some value if you can reach him with his DK. It's almost a coil. So it can be a surprise coil and disable a Breath of Fire, for example. Lich is there, full three hero combo and the sacrificial pit so the transition to worms is starting while karma is on tier 3 master bear upgrade started 37 food only no upgrades here yet oh scourge bone chimes that is really nice and he's trying to go for the expansion so wfc didn't scout this yet i feel but he's map control man he's uh, trapping karma on his side of the map occupying the entire middle Kama splits his dryads to get some more information, as well as the Demon Hunter, I like that play. It's a little uh, La Liot-esque. Of course not on that level, but it's alright. Demon Hunter, oh, Breath of Fire, Drunken Ace into all the ghouls, really nice! Can he kill the Taskmaster? This would be great for Kama, but no, not yet. And he can't risk to lose his Demon Hunter yet. Next Breath of Fire! No one to the Demon Hunter! He has, he has the Town Portal! And no step. there was a potion he could have swapped. The, can he get the Revenge Kill? No! Death Pact! It was not used, but some kind of healing was on the Decay. Invo Potion now on the Panda, and this is where Karma completely falls apart. Triple Hero Combo takes away everything. The units fall so fast, the Destroyer Push is working very, very nicely. Wind of Mana stealing. Coil! Oh! Saves it with a Town Portal. But yeah, losing the Demon Hunter was such a big mistake. With an Inbu Potion on the Panda, with a Town Portal on the Panda, this shall never happen. And being so greedy to not buy a staff is what breaks his neck here. He bought the time for the expansion, but look who's coming! He has not much normal damage anymore, so... He doesn't do that much damage against it. But that was exactly what I was talking about. Burning mana from the Panda, get a, a coil for that and almost getting the kill. Nice bait on the coil, though. He's trying his best to stay alive in this game, but... WFZ took the driving position, and just the, uh, the damage from one Fiend and those two heroes with the Orb of Corruption is great! Coil, Nova, Panda down! And without the Demon Hunter, he cannot survive this anymore. Demon Hunter is coming back. Last stand for Karma. A town is under siege. As the expansion falls, slowly but steady. Invo Potion and Heal Scroll. Yeah, there's no, no nuke for the Night Elf, but there's a nuke for the Undead. Demon Hunter as the first target here. He has Rejuvenation, but with the Destroyer in the air, there's always the spell. The cooldown for the Devourer is not that great. There it is! Hits it! Three bears, though. Can he somehow do the job? But I don't think so. Nice micro with the Destroyer over the trees. And now the target is the Demon Hunter again. The Lich is the damage. The Worm is coming. And that's the end for the bears, for sure. Uses the Staff now with the next skill or right clicks will kill the end uh, will be the end of the demon hunter and karma loses this game as wfz equalizes in match number two so team grubby is back equalizing here against team moon but that was to be expected no big surprise here karma did better uh, than we all thought and now moon has to place either chimiko or himself Will we see the fifth race with the first appearance? Uh, 
let's go for this one. It doesn't seem to be in Eddie's TV, but I want Moon vs. WFZ as it is uh, by far the most inter the, the more interesting game. I will keep this open until there's a decision so we can confirm that 1-2-0 wins this, even though the Blade Master is crazy. WFZ already on the way, two tier three ghouls are coming. The quality is not that great, I know. But it is Moon, everybody, and it is uh, the second best on that in the world. So Moon almost has to win this, I feel. Chimiko did play well yesterday, but is it enough to kill WFZ? Uh, hard to argue. On the other side, Shishi was strong yesterday, so they might need two players to take him out. It's going to be a hard task for Moon. So the chances for Team Grubby are very, very good here, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, we can't have the in-game sound because uh, it's Chinese commentary over it. All right. <clears throat> so we will have better quality now. The game is in Netties. So we're catching up. Oh, surround! Oh my god, he's walking into a surround and Moon again. This is what happened to him so many times in the past few tournaments. Constantly losing his first hero. And this looks like a very late Huntress hole to me. All right. Uh, damn it. Okay, you see what happens? I'm updating and then we switch. It's 1-1 one, one between the two teams. Grubby lost to Karma and WFZ eliminated Karma then. Alright, you are a little spoiled now, but whatever. Uh, here we go. Team Grubby versus Team Moon. Moon is playing himself. And there we go, on Twisted Meadows in a fine 16 by 9 and high quality again. And with in-game sound, this should be a lot better. <coughs> we are a few minutes behind of what we saw before. So if you're confused, I'm sorry about that. DK first and the Engine of War here. Uh, interesting creep route by Moon. Did he creep anything? Yeah, he's level t almost level 2. WFZ creeping simultaneously while harassing with the Death Knight. I like that. Keeping the Demon Hunter uh, away from doing anything big. But he got the boots and the Ring of Regeneration. Which is nice. Death Knight has no coil, but there sh should be no way for the Demon Hunter to steal this. And that's big experience. And level 2 for the DK. But the item goes towards Moon, and that's the Claw. Very nice inventory, I'd say, especially for the early stages in the game. Ring of Regeneration is so good. Three Wisps already, of course. It is Moon Meadows, his hometown, where he had so many big successes due to his unique playstyle. And there he's walking into a surround. Might be able to fight out of here, but no, DK is blocking this. Nicely done. And uh, this has to be the town portal. Archers come to the rescue, but too late. Can you get the kill? Yeah, one ghoul dead, second one survives. Who's already getting ready for an expansion, it's a good position there. Huntress Hall uh, is on t pretty much on time, so not too bad. On the other side, tier 2 tech by WFC almost done, but his attack. graveyard is late. So will be the fiends, but he can always... Uh, favor the second hero over the first fiend so that should be no problem at all as well 
And if he gets the new Road of Necromancy, then the resources for that are already down the drain. Demon Hunter gets a kill. And his leveling is quite okay. Well, there is a delay, but... He will go for a second hero anyway, and then afterwards he can start the tier 2. A player's forces are under Moon the attack. big inspiration. Oh, almost a surround again. He has no staff. He cannot afford to be surrounded. Three units surround. Definitely possible at the woods, but no. Opens it up again. Nice block from the DK so far, but with boots and... Oh, Naga. Nice. Saves the school. Not fast enough. Blocking now. Strong play by WFC. One of the best friends of Yumiko, who is not here. But he's uh, he's coming along with Shishi very much as well. And WFC's in a great mood yesterday and the day before. Before Oh, double Naga. Uh, usually when we see double Naga, one of uh, them die. But... Yeah, usually WFC, very serious guy, very uh, to himself, not laughing at all. But yesterday, man, we saw a very, very jolly German. Or oh, that's his nickname, at least. And there's the expansion. At an early stage of tier 2, while WFC is, of course, going for an immediate tier 3 tech. No fiend as of yet, but he doesn't really need it because there is no dryad so far. And the expansion, man, this is not a good timing at all. Has to defend this with Demon Hunter and Naga alone, and the Naga getting many, many, many hits already. Swapping the boots over to keep her alive. But Moon is defending this. Maybe he's lured out too far away from his engine of war. Ah, looking fine. If the expansion is coming through, this is a great situation for Moon. Even though his tier 3 is very delayed, only starting now. Demon Hunter close to 3, Death Knight far away. Twisted Meadows is a great Night Elf map, you can expand a lot because the map is so big. You can go for multiple uh, expansion attempts, this is why Moon is so feared on this map and this one. It's done already. Good defense by the fifth race. And he even has time to creep now. Bad thing is, Naga shines in the mid game. And it's good for aggression. For late game, the panda is definitely better. But focus fire is better with Naga. <coughs> On the other side, damage mitigation is not there. Uh, well, there's a little slow. Um, slowing the attack speed down. This results in less damage, but the Drunken Haze miss -quo, uh, chance is definitely superior to this. Moon checking out what's going on in his base. Lich is coming. Tier 3 finish. Statue on the battlefield. But still, Demon Hunter and Naga can level. And the expansions have been running. Fortified by this Engine of War. Tier 3 halfway done. Second Engine of War only now. No engine of wind yet for a potential hippogriff against the against a zeppelin play or something. Hippogriffs may be a choice later in the game when the heavy magic damage in the air from the undead rains on the night elves with destroyers and worms. Well, twisted not that great for worms though. A lot of open battlefield without trees, where you can't really hide them. Sobi Mask. Amazing. A and the first Claws of the Naga. One of the best damage dealers in the game. And if she gets Claws, then uh, it's a, really a treat. Toe of Experience and Flute of Accuracy. This is so nice for Moon. Almost level 4. And of course, more damage for Archers, Dryads. Demon Hunter with Orb is profiting as well. But WFZ comes in. The expansion has to fall if the undead wants to win this. Moon has to defend, of course, to keep it alive. Double heal scroll. Moon seems to be very well equipped, but he has no Master Wait, Bears yet. How far along is the upgrade? Uh, takes some time. Is he portaling? Entangled Goldmine is down, so no income anymore. Oh, Nova and Fork Lightning to kill the Wisps here, so yeah, the expansion is dry. 
Currently not regenerating resources. Where is... Okay, there's the master upgrade. Where is the demon hunter? Coming from above. 48 versus 46 supply. Still a lot of ghouls in there, but the fork lightning is killing the first one. Mana burn on the DK. Where is the demon hunter doing? Rejuvenation invo potion. Ooh, great combo here. Ghouls are falling. Three bears in the air. The destroyer is in a bad position, but it's not being focused that much. And the Demon Hunter man, there is this spell on the Reju, is there another nuke? He can't afford to lose this one, staffs him out! And the fight continues, but the Lich is there to pick up the pieces. First bear down, second bear down, and the faith of Grubby uh, will be shared by Moon most likely. As he's heavily down in supply. And the Legends man, is their time really over? For Grubby we can say yes, but he has fun. For Moon... Uh, he's still trying hard. But Undead versus Night Elf is such a hard matchup for the Night Elf. If the Undead picks up pace, now he's trying to go for a counter kill. No uh, death pack here to save him. Potion on the Demon Hunter. He can stay alive. And he is getting some kills here. Ignores the Destroyer completely. Only going for the Fiends despite there being no single bear. But the demon now steps out again. And yeah, this is the time where WFZ moves forward. When the demon hunter is gone, when the big damage dealer and tank is gone, he thrives. Ghouls are all dead, so not much normal damage. So it takes some time to tear this down. Moon is mining again. What is he producing? He needs more bears. He has a good amount of dryads for anti-air. But the problem is Lich, Orb of Corruption, Naga, Fiend Focus. Lots of detonates, but always dodging it with uh, the Death Knight. So there is a coil. Repairs, of course, for free. Moon falling into the back of WFZ. Two bears in a, kind of a bad position. Coil immediately on the Demon Hunter. Nova is not possible because of the mana burn on the Lich. And Moon, man, he is... Might be taking this Naga in big problems. Inbu potion saves him for now. As long as the Demon Hunter survives, this is looking good for the fifth race. And the Lich is the next target. He wants to go for the hero kill, and he's uh, he succeeds. Moon is really taking this. What a comeback! And Fork Lightning gets the second kill. The fiends are falling, and Moon. I was saying that he is about to lose, but uh -uh, getting a big kill over WFZ. And this team now in a great position as uh, he is playing against Shishi now has match points and afterwards there's still the backup player Chimiko who did fantastic yesterday but what was that by WFZ too much pressure too greedy he had such a big um such a big advantage after the first fight when the bears oh, were all down. But he kept on fighting, kept on losing. And I really like how um, Moon completely ignores the destroyer. Because he does a little damage and does dispel, yeah, but there's no bears, so he does do damage. And the fiends were falling way faster than expected. So good decision making by Moon. And Team Grubby is now down 1 to 2. And now their faith is lying in the fa uh, in the hands of uh, Joshishi. He saved them yesterday. Will he do it again? Yesterday's performance was stellar, though. Taking out Lin was incredibly strong. Oh, the overlay was wrong. Sorry about that. Whew. 6.15 here in Germany. 2 hours and 15 minutes. Um, this broadcast lasts already. Do we have it confirmed that 1201 won his game? Because we couldn't finish it. Yeah, 
According to Liquipedia, 101 on Amazonia. So Team Fly is out. And yeah, let's see. Thanks for the loots, guys. It's always a great support. There we go. This is the bracket. This ad is annoying the shit out of me. Uh, what what can we do? So I have to refresh this. There we go. Moon two o uh, two one up against Grubby. The next clan war or team war will be TH versus Remind. And here we see the result of today. Fly taking out two. <laughs> taking out two players with uh, soon and three but one two zero was too strong we said it yesterday when the teams were drafted maybe team one two zero is not really a team because soon and three are definitely not the best players but one two zero is and he could bring several all kills here in this tournament and that's exactly what he did to keep his team in the tournament eliminating fly romantic and jupiter with a very strong performance here yeah and this is the standing so far Karma beat Grubby, WFZ beat Karma, and Moon beat WFZ. That is, to me, a big surprise. I thought that the Undead would be the big, big favorite here. But all right, it's in the hands of Shishi. We saw it yesterday. Here it is, the result from the clan war of Team Grubby versus Team Lin. Shishi killing all three players and doing great in Mirrors. 3-0 in this tournament, 2-0 against Night Elves. Um, very good situation for the Night Elf here. But the Chinese go into another break. We will do the same and we will be back with a decision in Team Grubby versus Team Moon. It is Xi Xi versus Moon coming up. See you in a bit. Easy! Happy versus Grubby, man. What an epic battle. Uh, it's up on our YouTube somewhere. Grubby versus Happy on Echo Isles. Disastrous fight by the Dutch. And I hope this is... Uh, I'm not jinxing him with this uh, by, by showing this fight. But, yeah, his winner bracket life is on the line. And that means that Moon has match points now and can go into the playoffs with one more map win. And he has to go up against Shishi, who all killed Team Lin yesterday. But I think we have uh, some more time. Moon is already in. Shishi is not. So I, if you have any questions or something, if you want something to be discussed, then feel free uh, to ask something. Please highlight me in your questions, because uh, otherwise it's very hard to read here with about 1,000 viewers. Uh, for big tournaments, I don't like co-casters who I've never casted with before, um, because this can always be a disaster, and I don't wanna, I don't wanna uh, go that route. But thanks for the for the offer, man. What will the next emote be? It will be chosen by the guys who contributed to our Kickstarter. So I don't know. You up early? Yeah, I'm up for three hours and thirty minutes. Two hours and thirty minutes cast. How's the weather? I don't know. I got the blankets down, so... Oh, it, is it called blankets? I don't know. Like, I can't see through my window because there's some cloth for uh, in front of it. Do you know Grubby? I met him once at uh, WCA European Qualifier at Gamescom 2015, and there's not a single bad word that I can say about him. Um, really nice guy, and of course, he I think he didn't know us back then. Um... But he was really the nicest guy, super interested in what we do. And I mean, in 2015, uh, we were not as big as we are now. I mean, we had maybe 4,000 followers and there were maybe f 300, 400 people on our stream. So it's natural that he, um, as he was just streaming Heroes of the Storm, didn't know us. But he liked our commentary, I think. Um, talked a lot about the games back then. It was such a cool tournament with Heroes there, with Warcraft there, uh, League of Legends, stuff like that. It was really a great experience. Um, I really hope we can do that again someday. Casting in front of the crowd is 
one of the coolest moments in my entire life because I thought, okay, there's going to be a big crowd for, you know, all the the new games. Um, and Warcraft didn't have the best time. Like, it was played early in the morning at 10 or something. But when we showed up and sat at the caster's desk, I turned around and I was like, yo, Remo, the area is packed. They all want to see Warcraft. It was crazy. And then you can do, like, the player introductions like Atosis does uh, with uh, this is yours and stuff like that and everybody's cheering and I got goosebumps all over thinking about it curtains yeah yeah sorry <clears throat> what Warcraft race do you play I'm playing undead if I play was happy not invited no happy just wants to stream and doesn't want to play Chinese competition can you think of a game where pros actually use necros? Yeah, TED on Echo Isles. I don't know who his opponent was, but he played a necro wagon push uh, successfully. <laughs> Thank you, Jade's Johnny, for the sub, as well as Illumiel. The subs are coming in, I like. Of course, uh, the more support we get, the more we can cast. Last year it was over 900 hours of Warcraft action here at Back to Warcraft, so... Um, feel free to use the loots or subscribe um, or buy our merchandise or donate here, whatever. A every single contribution helps and uh, really makes makes us happy. Which tower defense is the best? Um, I was always a big fan of Spiral TD, but it's kind of boring. So I would say Gem TD, I think I played the most. Can we still take time to appreciate WCA European Qualifier in Cologne? Uh, 7k viewers. That's wrong. It was 13.5k viewers. Front page of Twitch. Best production ever for Back to Warcraft. That's right. That was the best podcast we ever did. Ted versus Insomnia. Are you sure? Hmm. When is the next drunk... Cast. I don't think uh, I will do it again. <laughs> Is there a better sound in the game than Lich dying? Yeah, Dryad's dying. Dryad's dying is awesome. Is Grubby's team eliminated or is there another game? Okay, I can show the grid to you again to explain the system. Uh, da -da -da -da. Hi, and shout out to Team Liquid. So, Gravi's team is currently in the winner bracket of the double elimination. If, yeah, the, the team that wins here, there, um, will advance to the winner's final that is automatically qualified for the playoffs. If Gravi's team loses now, he will drop down to here and face Team 1-2-0. <clears throat> I think that's how it works. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Um, and so he has to win this clan war because these two guys here in the losers round three are also qualified for the playoffs so if grubby loses now or basically he has to win one team match today and then he's in the playoffs for tomorrow that's how it works if he loses both he's out oh you hear the chains you hear the chains rattle it's about to start It's my son Dusty's birthday. Can you give him a shout out? Usually I don't do that because I don't think a birthday is something to celebrate because everybody has one. But uh, since it's your son, happy birthday, Dusty. All right. We go into the game. Here at Spec to Warcraft. Grubby's tournament or w winner bracket live on the line. Match points for Moon as he is standing up against Zhou Shishi. He surprised us all yesterday. I said from the beginning on to Remo that uh, Shishi will surprise us here this tournament. Yesterday was a great start. But now this is the rematch of WCA 2015. It was the opening match of that tournament, the opening match of the comeback of Moon. And... Moon won that game, 2-1. to one. I just look up the statistics. 
I can't shout out TurboZau enough. Uh, that's the guy who does all the statistics here for our broadcasts and uh, using Liquipedia to the fullest. So we have three uh, matchups so far from Moon versus Shishi, and it's very equal. They met, as I mentioned, at WCA 2015. There it was a uh, uh, 2 to 1 for Moon. They met in GCS 2015. There it was a 0 to 2 uh, from Moon, so a 2 0 win for Shishi. And they met in GCS Spring in 2016. There it was a 2 0 for Moon. So one map advantage for Moon in statistics, but it's basically 50 50. So we can be excited for a nice night of Mirror. And I wonder what Moon is playing. Last time they played, uh, he was. Um, kind of trapped inside the idea that Demon Hunter solo in Night of Mirror is a good idea, which I highly doubt. Shishi in blue for Team Grubby, or representing Team Grubby. He is undefeated in this tournament so far, but so is Moon. But he has only played one game, so it's not really saying too much. Demon Hunter out. Both are uh, saying, okay, let's not fight. Uh, no combat uh, packed up front. Going for the consumable here. Big healing or big invul potion would be the dream. And Shishi already lucky with the big invul potion. And creeping up the way to level 2. And we got our clock back. There we go. 2 minutes and 30 is played. So only 30 seconds with the hero. We didn't miss too much. Potion of greater healing for Moon. That is not the greatest start. Of course, it's China versus Korea once again. And usually in team games, Korea reigns over China. Will it be the same again? The Koreans have played tremendously yesterday and Moon continues this legacy and one more Korean is waiting in the team of Moon uh, with the name Chimiko. So, 22 food for Shishi. No tech yet. A player's forces are under attack. Grubby, uh, Grubby Moon just started it. Okay, Shishi's a little late with it. But therefore, has the way better item. Now it's going to the High Priest. This is a great drop. A consumable replenishment potion. That means he can tank a lot of damage while creeping or harassing. And then uh, just heal it up with a replenishment potion. He was looking for the Watch Awards or maybe Wind of Illusion to get more info on his opponent. But uh, you can't be lucky all the time. Moon is doing the same. Oh, Shishi is trying to steal this. But with Moon's presence here, um, he has to run away. There's nothing he can really do against this now. And is a little unlucky, but that's not a big threat. Three archers here. That's always the question. Do both player go for bears or is one going into talent play? Which is a great matchup to watch. Bears versus talents. One of the best uh, things that we can witness in Warcraft because there's a lot of um, tactical shifts in this matchup, the one goes for talents, the other goes for bears, and you transition into mountain giants, and the other goes for bears, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's really, really cool to see a lot of transitions here. So we don't see a Huntress Hall just yet. Interesting Play shot position for Moon. So that indicates that he wants to be aggressive. Four archers, he's building the fifth one, and the sixth one! Moon is going range! Shishi is usually... Uh, bear player all the time but has to be careful about his demon hunter he wants to lower the number of uh, archers of course and he has a big advantage and now moon's position of the shop is backfiring here was too aggressive with this of course with talents you produce them very very quickly can do a lot with the magic damage you want to have the map presence you want to have the do uh, to dominate the mid game with that and shishi yeah there's the hunter's hall it's in time perfect timing actually uh, the Moon Worlds are maybe a little late, but still okay. Moon getting his High Priest now. And what is this? Replenishment Potion as well, so that's fair. But yeah, interesting. Moon and his talents, of course. Uh, he's not the innovator of the talent uh, strategy. Or not the... the uh, the guy who played it first because there was Magic Yang from China, but he was the one playing it with the Tinker and definitely the guy who made the strategy super duper famous. So, yeah, especially in the matchup against Orc, there was nobody that could beat Moon in televised or streamed games for more than two years <coughs> in Night Elf vs. Orc because of the talents, of course, and the strength of the Beastmaster Tinker combo. Circle of ability for Shishi. But I think it's looking good for him. Two circlets, boots, st st still the big invul potion, didn't trigger it before. 
But the question is, will the Demon Hunter be the big factor? Because there's gonna be Cyclone later on. Uh, Moon wants to play on tier 2 for a long time. But then at some point he will go there. And there's the Engine of Wind. Tier 3 tech, alright? So he's not going for double Engine of Wind. This is interesting that he goes for the fast tech. Of course, later you need Cyclone, of course, at one point. And I think a bigger number of talents is also... Uh, or could be better. But of course there's gonna be Dryads as a counter to that. I wonder what Shishi is doing. He must know about this now. Went for the Naga. Could go for a Dark Ranger third. Uh, because of course talents are very squishy if you focus them down with double orb. And then you get a skeleton from every corpse. Or from every kill. Then this snowballs. But not everybody does it. Three gloves of haste for Moon. And here's the creep jack, but Shishi has not too much firepower, but the demon hunter is super duper low. He has no boots, has to pull the town portal, your moon is struggling! And moon has to use the town portal. No kill on the naga, but that is 350 gold that Shishi got out of him here. And buying time. He needs to buy time. The second engine of lore is only coming now. He wants more dryads to be ready for the talent push. Second engine of... Yeah, second engine of wind is there as well. Tier 3 almost done and the adept upgrade is lining up perfectly for the fifth race. So small advantage for Shishi, small advantage for Team Moon, uh, for Team Grubby. But alright, gonna see about that if he can carry this advantage into the late game stage. At one point Shishi will have to transition. either into mountain giants or a lot more dryads. But if he goes more dryads, then it's just gonna be archers um, as a counter to that, so it's not that easy. One of the wind for Shishi. We saw how strong this can be in the game of fly... No, what's... Who was it? 1-2-0 versus... I don't know. Mana stone, usually a great item for a naga, not so much. Master training has started. And how far along is Shishi? Not going for bears yet at all. Of course he needs the abolish magic. But that's slow. That's a very slow play by Shishi and he knows about that. Going for an ancient protector, he knows the push is coming, he knows he's not in a situation to deflect this yet. And so he has to, or he's, he feels forced into static defense, with defense, which is of course an investment that you really don't want to do. Shadow Priest by Moon, pretty late. Orb of Venom, Devotion Aura, not really what he wanted, but okay. 44 food, four, 5 talents, depth upgrade still, but Master is almost done. Keep an eye on that, as both players are creeping. Boots of Keltaras. This demon hunter is really happy about this drop. As he's up at 10 food, will sell the ring most likely and then get the orb for that. But you see the big red ball coming. Moon! Oh, he's going for the tinker. Alright, guaranteed damage and something to block from the pocket factory. And a lot of damage coming up here. The engine of war is not in the greatest position just now. Where are the bears? He's not going for bears at all. He's only having talons. And the number of archers is pretty damn high. Cyclone being used. Oh, I don't know if the damage from the archers isn't too high for this dryad play. 44 food versus 49. She, she's demon hunter has to carry. Got the orb. Sold a circlet for it. So he wants more damage mitigation from this ring of protection. Wisps to the spell. It's not producing anything. She's here struggling. He has no lumber. 500 gold, but no lumber. Very important. Mana burn here to deny the next pocket factory. Good kill on the wisps. I think he needs to produce more. Five dryads, three archers. What can he do against the archers of moon? The siege continues. Fork lightning against the wisps again. So the repair is gone and the choke is opening up. It would be a big surprise in my opinion if Moon beats Shishi here now. We haven't seen too much of Moon since, I don't know, November. He's coming out of nowhere basically. The demon uh, hunter and the tinker, they're diving in deep. 
getting rewarded with two kills on the uh, on the giants, and you see the damage volleys from the archers really working. He has to give up his base basically. Nice heal scroll by Moon. Of course, he occupied the shop. Fantastic fork lightning, but now the demon hunter has to pull the invul very very soon. But Chi Chi is coming back. He's getting kills here and sandwiching Moon to a degree. And the end protector is working for this as well. Good recovery for Team Grubby here. Fantastic play. And the invul potion has to be triggered on Moon's side as well. No, nope. saves it with the heal scroll at first. But you see it, plus 13 damage, man. He's wiping the floor with all those new HP units. The Naga is in problems, has to step, has to uh, swap the invul potion and uses it. Holy shit, that was really close. Oh my god. What an intense battle, Moon now with a 10 food advantage, but that doesn't do too much if he loses the hero here. Without Naga, without Demon Hunter, he can't do anything, mana burn on both sides, staff out! And the Naga is safe, Moon is retreating here, he's expanding behind this, he knows, okay, this fight takes forever. And so I can use this time. She, she looked like he could come back, but it doesn't do the job. Mountain Giant transition, here it is, Hardened Skin. He needs to buy time. He needs something up front to block. He needs to, to he needs something to soak up damage. And Mountain Giants with 2,000 HP. Or is it 1,400? Not too sure. Um, and Taunt really does the job almost perfectly. Double kill for Shishi again. Level 4 Demon Hunter. Almost level 3 Naga. That level would be important. As Moon is running uh, pretty far away with this Naga so far. Tinker getting close to level 2, Demon Hunter as well, so, yeah. This is the big problem for Team Grubby now. This expansion needs to die if they want to get into the fifth map here. Dangerous spot for Shishi, he doesn't have too much damage, he has not too much to block. And Moon is right around the corner. If they get the Ogre Lord, that would be fantastic. Moon is a little passive here, taking out the Murlocs. Okay, so they get it. Ancient Django of Endurance. More attack speed, more movement speed. And movement speed is especially important because Mountain Giants are super duper slow. And of course, everything benefits from more attack speed. So this is a better Fault Lightning, and especially against the low HP units of Moon, this will do a tremendous job. How's the item situation? Heal potion and heal scroll. Double heal potion. Shishi with an invul, and that's it. And an anti-magic to deny him the cyclone. First MJ is there. MG. <sighs> Look how cute he is, right? But also devious. It's 1600 HP. Piercing doesn't do too much to them. Magic damage doesn't do too much to them. They are the perfect counter, but you need three or four of them to really dominate the game. <clears throat> Before that, there's still a chance for Moon to take them out. Dryads are coming in. Where is the Mountain Giant? There he is. Not in the best position. Double Cyclone immediately. Shishi is looking for the perfect position here. <coughs> but the clock is ticking against him. He used all his resources for two more mountain giants and then it's time to attack the expansion. Moon at the other side occupying the shop again. Great shop control by the former Meteor Makers player. Fight ensues again. He shouldn't lose too much HP on his mountain giant already. But of course the Dryads are super safe. Berserker goes down. This is nice. It is, is the number one counter to Dryads currently. And the big damage dealer in this army. Ogomola is the counter against the Mountain Giants. But it fall, uh, falls. Shishi is out leveling the Demon Hunter of Moon currently. The second Mountain Giant is there. So much to tank. And the Heroes of Moon are dropping low. But there's enough items, I guess. Oh, he used a lot of... Okay, he has two heal scrolls. But he used a lot of stuff again. First heal scroll being used. Is there... Okay, no mana on the Naga anymore. And it's three Mountain Giants now. This should be winnable for Shishi. But you never know. 
Where is Shishi's Demon Hunter? Only coming back now. The Cyclone did really bad to him. And Moon TV's out. Doesn't want to lose his heroes. It's close to a double kill. But he doesn't get one of them. Couldn't decide what to focus. And at the end, Moon escapes with both heroes alive. But all right. It's time to get, grab a tree. It's time to walk up north. It's time to tear down this expansion. It's also time for more Dryads and items. He took a lot of items out of Moon's inventory. Look here. One invol is left and one healing and one scroll of healing. Moon is struggling. The numbers are looking good. 63 food. But that... Uh, what can you do against this? A player's forces are under attack. Great siege damage. Moon sees this attack coming. The good thing for Moon is that it's only three Dryads, but the Demon Hunter... Oh, even using Ancient Protector for more piercing damage. Good strategical choice for Shishi as it takes away the focus from the Mountain Giant onto this Ancient Protector. Mass damage from this building. Easy snipe against the Protectors. Fork Lightning, Mana Burn, he wants to get rid of the Pocket Factory as fast as possible. Spot being used, it's nice. The AP is having a very good progress, but... Oh, the Tinker is down! Third hero falls, finally he gets the hero kill, but he gets one Mountain Giant in return, which is almost like a hero kill. Moon still has an Invo Potion and a heal scroll. Shishi is losing a lot of units. Engine of War by Moon, and he tears down the Protector. Moon with an incredible fight so far. Killing off all the Dryads now. Perfect position for the Archers, for the Berserkers. The Mercenaries are doing a very good job. And as long as the Mountain Giants are not attacking the expansion, everything is good for the Korean. Taunt being used again, but the Dryads are falling left, right and center. It's like flies here. But still, the Demon Hunter is level 5. And if he gets to Metamorphosis before Moon does... I smell trouble. Demon Hunter completely out of position, but with two items still. Using the heal potion. Now this is level 5. Dryads give so much experience. Naga is not level 4. Moon has to heal up. Is this the opportunity to knock down the buildings? I don't know. It's all 40, yeah, 50 food now. He's investing heavily into Dryads. The good thing is that two Mountain Giants are still available, but so many mercs. Oh, Demon Hunter, it's taunt being used. Demon Hunter, slow! Demon Hunter, invul potion with 15 HP and the staff out from the Naga, but this taunt usage of Shishi, brilliant, but he loses unit after unit. You can't retreat against that if everything is so low as it is. Mountain Giants, MVP of this game. But now he finds himself into a very questionable decision. Demon Hunter of Moon has nothing anymore. And only a heal potion has to use it soon. Taunt being used again. This Demon Hunter is falling with a potion in his inventory. This is never supposed to happen. And this will be level 6 very, very soon. We see Chuck Norris on the horizon. Superman is flying through the air. Oh boy, what a disaster for Moon. There's the Dryad slowing the Naga. Invo Potion could save her. Or oh, Invis Potion. Town Portal being bought, but it doesn't matter. 350 gold gone out the window and a triple kill for Shishi. Uh, double kill, sorry. Tinker was killed before. What a comeback. Steamrolling with two Mountain Giants and his heroes over the entire army of Moon. But the expansion is still up. It is a level 6 Demon Hunter. If Metamorphosis hits, this should be the end. He uses Mana Burn though, interestingly. Not going for a Mana Potion. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. The only thing that could sh stop Shishi now is if he gives Moon too much time to come back into this game. There's 800 gold. Nice save with the crow form. But he got so many kills, man. He got so many kills. Naga almost level 5. The Mountain Giants now at the Tree of Life. Mass Repair is coming in and he gets sandwiched by the Ancients of War but can easily run away. Moon is scouting for expansions. 
main gold mines, 200 gold remaining, and there is nature's blessing to walk the tree of eternity over to the next gold mine. This is the coolest and closest game so far, I guess. Oh, well, not the coolest. TBCVM versus Fly was uh, incredible. So, Moon, what can you do? Level 5 Demon Hunter, it takes forever to get him back. 21 minute mark is reached. And there he is, back again. But Naga, level 4, takes 2 minutes as well. Entrance of Wara down. And the same faith will happen to the Tree of Life that makes Moon with no. Uh, that, that gives Moon no gold income. He has a bank of 1000. But he has no solution against the Mountain Giants. That is usually the case in this matchup. You need to find a way to kill these guys with bears or whatever. But that takes a lot of time. It's 7 o'clock in Central Europe and we witness a magical comeback by the acrobat Doshishi. Okay, now both players need time to set up their Tree of Eternity. Where is Moon's Tree of Eternity? Ah, down here! Immediately scouted though. And Shishi is walking over here. This is a, such an intense situation. Ah, he, wants, he, he wanted to wake up the creeps. Interesting move. Didn't really work. But he has to take out the red spots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dryads. And look at the mana. He cannot deny the metamorphosis. Helm of Valor, also not an item that you really want. And look at him go in a second. Three mountain giants. Give it to me, baby. The ultimate... Oh, Cyclone. All right. The ultimate that we're all waiting for. Still denied. Isn't he going for the ultimate? Mana burn on both sides. There it is! And here we go, chaos damage, splash damage, range attack, more HP. Cyclone dispelled the entire time. Look at the Tinker melting away the metal that he wears on his back. The Fury Dragon's trying so hard but can't do anything. Chaos damage, too strong! And Shishi takes out Moon and is still undefeated. 4-0 in Nostalgia Battlefield and a great comeback. There he is. Cold as ice he looks. But what a strong game. It almost looked like he lost it when Moon attacked his base. But uh uh. Fighting like a lion, holding on, grasping everything at every straw that he could uh, somehow reach. And Moon, 1-1, one, one, and that equalizes the entire statistics for Shishi and Moon. They're now 6-6. Uh, six six. No. They were 5-4, 7-7 seven, they are now. Whew, what a game, and we really get the fifth game of Team Grubby versus Team Moon, and it's gonna be Joshishi versus Chimiko. The players who brought their team into this winner bracket semi-final yesterday Chimiko with an incredible performance over um, Infi and Colorful. Big upset to win the Human Mirror versus Infi. And we don't have to talk about Shishi as he took out Lin. Fantastic. Echo Isles is going to be the map. And I hope we're not going into a break now. I don't think so. But of course we need some time for... Okay, we go into a break. We need some time for um, Chimiko to set up. I'm going to take a little break here, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, feel free to uh, support us with a few loots and get some nice breakfast. So here we go into a break. And we'll be right back with a decision in the winner bracket semifinal. One map into the playoffs tomorrow. See you in a bit. We're back, everybody, with a decision in this clan 
war. Oops, sorry for the noise. Um, with a decision in this clan war. It is a clan war that lasts for three hours and ten minutes already. And we have the two star players coming up now. And the star players are not Grubby or Moon. They are not WFZ and Moon. Uh -uh. It is Zoshishi and Chimiko. Who would have thought that if you tell me this two weeks ago, it's unbelievable that those two are carrying their team. <sighs> one map for glory, one map into the bubble system and a great position in the bubble system. <clears throat> As you can see here, they end up in the winners finals, which will be played t later today. And they're definitely uh, guaranteed second seat for the bubble system. That is this one. So they will end up here or here. That means one or two clan wars to glory. This is what happened today. Oh, this is not updated or is my page not updated? This is what happened so far. Karma beat Grubby, WFZ beat Karma, Moon beat WFZ, Shishi beat Moon. A back and forth and back and forth. According to the series, Chamiko wins now, but he's up against the 4-0 Joshishi. Apart from that, Team Fly is out. The captain started, eliminated Tune and 3, but then all kill by 1-0. Uh, as we expected yesterday, so Team Infi and Team 1 to 0 waiting for the losers of these clan wars here. Team Lin and Team Fly are out. That means we won't see live Alice, Lin, Fly, 3 and Shun in this tournament anymore. We will cut down um, from 8 teams yesterday to 4 teams today. 2 more will drop out <coughs> in the upcoming uh, hours. Thank you very much, <coughs> Chevros, for the sub, by the way. Uh, always appreciate it. And every subscriber gets the replay pack of the cast right after. You just have to switch uh, to, to look into your Twitch inbox. They are there uh, with a link to Zippy Share, I guess it is. So feel free to sub. And yeah, Chimiko making Korea proud yesterday. Shishi making China proud and Europe very happy because Grubby stays alive or Grubby's team stays alive in this Nostalgia Battlefield tournament. We have more than 1,000 viewers here at 7 a.m. on a Saturday. This is crazy. <laughs> wow, Chevron, it's the first Twitch sub ever. That is really cool. That's really, really cool. What an honor it is. It's, it's always cool if uh, we see a, a Amazon Prime sub or a sub uh, for the first time. Because, I mean, there's so many channels out, out there and you chose us. It's really cool. So, uh, Shishi is already in the game waiting for Chamiko. Grubby is tweeting, by the way, wow, what an amazing comeback by Shishi. Mountain Giants being an extremely valuable unit. I love Walker 3 even more seeing that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I mentioned this before. Night of Mirror can be the best matchup there is with uh, constant transitions. And that results, because you kill a lot of units, um, that results always in high level hero action if it's not bears. Can you recommend some game platforms for Warcraft? Of course, uh, depending on where you live. If you're living in um, Europe or Eastern America, or East America, go for W3 Arena. It's tft.w3arena.net. If you are from Asia or from Western America, you can go for NetEase. Uh, it's dz.163.com or something. NetEase is by far the best client, but it has only servers in China. Uh, you can use some ping accelerator programs like uh, Lawn Life, for example, or UU Accelerator uh, to get a better ping. But yeah, NetEase is by far the biggest, is by far the most developed. Um, but the only thing is that China servers, you know, it's not that great. 
W3 Arena is better than Battle.net by far, but you have to patch back. But the good thing about W3 Arena is it is native 16x9 as we show on our stream. So both of them are awesome. And if you're really bad, you can play on Battle.net. Like, that's uh, still okay. I mean, the ping is getting better. Uh, they reduced the built-in delay from one to, uh, from 250 to 200. I didn't see Grubby today. Same cheese like yesterday or serious loss. Uh, it was a very unfortunate loss uh, from Grubby. He played very good, had a cool little moves in his game. But then his opponent found a Book of the Dead, and you know how good this item is against Orc. Spawn it in the base, kill the burrows, and there's basically no comeback from that. Why can't W3 Arena use the new patch? Because you basically have to recode everything. And since the main coder of W3 Arena is gone, <coughs> they don't have the time for that. Or the uh, people for that. Appreciate the cast. Thank you, Neo. Thank you for tuning in. And we go in game with the final game of this clan war it is as mentioned Shishi versus Chemiko game is up game is running and we are excited for this representing team moon in a team with of course the legend himself what honor this must be for the Korean hero uh, for uh, to to play with the Korean hero in the same team and carry it it is Chemiko he lives in a team house now with Clan A1, Laliot, Focus, Sock, Soin. They got an apartment and they built it into a team house. And since then, his performance has skyrocketed. Good letter performances, uh, decent Jera Cup appearances, but this might be his breakout tournament. On the other side, representing Team Grubby with uh, being undefeated in this tournament so far all kill yesterday will it be the second all kill oh no it's not an all kill because uh wfz got one map but he could get up to five and oh it's a warden i've rarely seen shishi play warden this is gonna be exciting guys one of the coolest matchups in all of warcraft 3 warden on echo isles versus human this could be crazy tomiko is not going for a mountain king to counter this he's going for an archmage uh, tried and true and yeah, the thing is, Warden is extremely powerful once level 3. Shadow Strike is a great nuke. Fan of Knives even better if you want to get into the economy. Because so much AoE and the mobility of a Warden is a great, great synergy. Together with a Staff or Boots or whatever. Um, so getting level 3 is the number one priority. You start here with the Mercenary Camp. It's fairly easy to take. If not harassed, and it will not be harassed, you get... Uh, Shadow Priest for healing and the spell against the Wattle Mentals. And then you should be safe. Then you continue on, get level 3 and start to arrest the human. The human will go for an expansion. He has to go for an expansion early on. Otherwise you can't really compete against Night, uh, yeah, against night Elf. Rifle pushes, tower pushes. They don't work anymore because Night Elves know how to counter this. The item here is incredibly important. Boots of Speed or Pendant of Energy are almost GG. And so the RNGesus can carry Grubby into the winner bracket final, or Grubby's team into the winner bracket final. Let's see what he gets. Ring of Regeneration would also be good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is the Ring of Regeneration, so uh, the Warden can tank a little more, stay in fights or harass us longer. On the other side, Chimiko going for a very fast expansion. Not level 2, no mercenary support, immediate pressure. And of course, Chimiko is in a team house with, uh, with Lolliet. And Lolliet is the number one Warden player in the world since 2015, where he eliminated the Chinese human elite all after another. Uh, like, one after another. Nobody stood a chance against this play. And yeah, but the good thing is, if you apply pressure, Warden can't really creep that much, can't really harass this much. She's doing it nevertheless. Fan of Knives early on to go for the peasants right here. 
First one is down, second one will be falling. Another fan of knives is inbound most likely. Two kills is good. No tech yet, and uh, this must be a counter expansion. Yeah, there it is. Uh, Shishi with a counter expansion already. He might not lose this moon well here, otherwise he can't go for more mercenaries, and then it's gonna be really hard. Saves this wisp, but not the moon well. So both players are trading. Shishi feels forced into a town portal after wrecking the entire peasant line. Here we go. If he loses the second moon well, that would be a disaster, but no. With the dispel against the water elementals, he rises up in levels. Shadow strikes and no blink might lead to a tomb of retraining later. Great save with shadow melt. No dust on the archmage, and yeah, with, with the damage of shadow strike, there's no way to compete here. Chimiko is losing this footman. Pretty unnecessary to do so, but oh my god, he's abandoning the expansion. This is a tower push. Lumber mill is coming, and what's the reaction now? He invested so much into the tree of life. This is horrible for Shishi. No engine of war in the base. Not too many moon wells to to heal up from. And the lumber mill is almost completed. And then we can see guard towers. Militia, of course, as good as footmen, tearing down the moon world. Great reaction by the Koreans. Not stubbornly going for the expansion. Bouncing his head against the wall. Uh -uh. Transitioning into something else. And Shishi is completely outplayed so far. But can he defend this? It's not a demon hunter. Warden is not that great against the tower push. That is why players like TH are going for a warden first or a tinker first to do this tower push here on Echo Isles. And the lumber mill is ready. Shishi is still supply stuck, going for the hero kill. There is a town portal. He's losing the uh, Berserker and finally level 2. Brilliant's Aura is a great support. Towers are coming up and what can he do against it? Not too much. Engine of War a little late. And saving this footman is Chimiko. Great one. He's sending in more archers. The Tree of Life is up but the 300 gold are completely useless currently. Level 2 fan of knives now to do something against the worker. But this Engine of War should not come up because the towers are there. His team and the life of Shishi about to drop down. He's good in taking out the units here and gathering experience, but the problem is the towers because they are in range. He's focusing the Tree of Life immediately. Engine of War can attack the towers as it seems. There's no mana for a Shadow Strike. One Moon will has still uh, something, some Moon Juice left. At the third tower, he's hardly committing to it and cancels it. That was big. Four archers and the Shadow Priest. This good piercing damage. No defense on Chimiko's side yet. If Chim uh, if defense comes into play, life for him is going to be very easy. And the Archmage now. What a recovery from Shishi this could be. He doesn't want a town portal, but he might have to. There's no blink. There's no block from this footman. Little lazy. Oh, but he saves the Archmage. Great one. And now he can... Uh, continue to apply the pressure. Shishi still on tier 1, still continues to produce um, wisps here. He needs that. The Shadow Strike is near. The Shadow Strike is super near. He wants to bait it and then Town Portal. Life of the Archmage on a knife's edge. Life of Moon's team on a knife's edge. The only problem for Shishi is the towers. But what's the Warden doing? <sighs> Gets some healing from the Shadow Priest. He has two Shadow Priests. Incredible important purchases here. What a turnaround again. This hero focus was definitely worth it, but now it's daytime. Moon Juice is completely gone. Can he dive in for a Shadow Strike and kill the Archmage? He has no tower. He has no chance of healing his Archmage up currently. He didn't uh, free his mercenary camp, so no Shadow Priest for him. Warden has mana for... Fa uh, sh oh, use the Shadow Strike here. Ah, okay. Gets the mana back from the level up. Ten of Knives doesn't hit the Archmage, really. Who's hiding? Ring around the rosy around the shop, but the archers are doing the damage. There is no more spell. But the army of Shishi, the mercenaries, they are carrying him home. As it seems, but everything is crimson red except the warden. Who's rising up in levels so hard. The engine of war constantly damaging more militia. This seems to be an all-in. Diving in for the archmage again. Count! Oh, trying to go for a surround, but doesn't really work. The guy who does the first mistake here is definitely losing the game. He cannot overcommit with the Warden, cannot be surrounded. Then he's losing it. But that should be it. Archmage, right click, Archers hit, Town Portal out. And the pressure is off of Shishi. That means he can go for the expansion. That means he can free his main base. This 
is one and a half legs into the winner bracket final four team grubby oh boy oh boy oh boy where did he get the healing ah maybe from the shop but there was only um a clarity potion not a scroll of regeneration Claws of attack helpful very helpful there is Whoa, Fan of Knives will kill three of them or something. There we go, triple kill. But baiting the spell so the Archmage remains alive. And he can go for the scroll of regeneration now. And for clarity again, wow. This is danger zone, man. And she, she is waiting for the knight, but it's so long until it's there. And he didn't have the time to kill the towers. So the situation is basically the same. Finally healing for Chimiko. And the footmen are rising in numbers. <sighs> the game looked a little over, but it's not. Are under Tree of Life is doing nothing. He could creep this alone, I guess. Oh, Moonstone. This is so helpful. But he needs repair. Where's, where the wisp? He only has one wisp left. He has to go for the Archmage. He has to go for the kill. Shadow Strike seems not to be enough. And the Engine of War is down. This means he can freely attack the Tree of Life. What a turnaround from Chimiko all of a sudden. The Archmage was down to 3 HP. Now it's time for the chase. Shadow Strike, Fan of Knives, level 5 and right clicks. He's blocking himself! The Archmage has no TP, but now the Warden is trapped! The Warden is trapped! Can she fight out there? It doesn't look like it, but she can! Footman not closing the surround. Oh my god, what an intense situation, but the next nuke is the death of the Archmage again. Still no defense. No defend, I mean. Great play by both. Tree of Life still idling. Could have pulled him maybe to try to defend this. To have some wood shield. Third guard tower coming up. When is it night time? Uh, not too long ago. I think she's just giving up his main base. Mass repair now. But this will all be sniped. Where is the Chinese player? There we go. Warden has a lot of mana. Has to go for the Archmage now. He has to kill him. Tree of Life remains alive. Nice dodges by Chimiko, but now he might be caught. Constantly out of range. Wow, what a great play. Yeah, he kills him with a fan of knives. And now he has no summons anymore. Time to breathe. But it's only a level 2 Archmage. This means uh, 60 seconds, I guess, without the first hero. But it's three towers, almost four towers. He has to abandon the main. There's no way to repair against this, and I think he realizes it now. After all, it's a level 5 Warden. She can carry games by herself. What a crazy game. Tree of Life is gone. No income for Shishi. Oh, he has to use... Okay, the Moon Wills will hurt. But this will take a lot of time to take down the Moon Wills. The Altar of Alice is not really important. Warden shouldn't die. Every single kill brings the Warden closer to level 6, which is the Avatar of Vengeance. A great, great spell. Did he tech behind this? No. Archmage is back though. A lot of lumber issues for Chimiko, so he can't really expand here, which would be an alternative. But Chichi will have income in a bit. The game is not over. Warden will heal up, will do damage with Fan of Knives. Yeah, uses all the mana that is here. Oh, this could be close to level one. Oh my god! Holy shit, that damage! He will. He might be able to take it out all here. 
Footman down, Peasant down, next Peasant down, Footman with a Shadow Strike. Massacre in his former base. And the XP bar is rising. Warden wants to use the rest of the mana here. So many spells to be used now. Did it with a shadow uh, strike. Okay. Set back to everything. She, she, it is one warden to rule them all. It's definitely one warden to rule them all. He is down to 13 supply. This is ridiculously low. Chimiko on 26. Still no tech. Still only footman. But with this level 3 fan of knives. And as long as the shop is alive, you can constantly get clarities. Which is his win condition now. Archmage is in danger. Warden is waiting for him. Boots will help massively to run away from the Warden. He's not going for it. He has the money. That's interesting. Second engine of war. <laughs> Mud Golem for additional slow against the Archmage. If he gets the hero once again, this should be over as he has no resources. Okay, he will have resources to expand soon or to tech. Archmage cancels this, but the Warden finds him. I really wonder why he's not going for boots. Remo says it all the time. It's so important to have them against the slow. Yeah, did I promise too much when I said uh, this is one of the best Warcraft matchups on a map that we could get? It is masterful. Huntress Hall now. Yeah. Since you need them for glaive throwers, this is necessary. Who's there with 300 mana? Oh, dodge with the invul potion. Very well done. One doesn't stay out of range of the arcane tower. Little mistake here. Calls for militia. This will be the expansion. This has to be the expansion for Chimiko. And then the tide is turning around with Shishi going for glaive throwers. What the hell is going on here? Clarity again. But there's constant heal now on the AM. Hero focus doesn't do too much anymore. I think he should go for units. And now there's defend. So archers and berserkers are pretty much useless. 50% damage reduction, 30% uh, reflect chance. Reflect doesn't do damage, but damages the own unit. So that is even better than hero armor now. Chimiko seems to have this, but we've seen crazy, crazy turnarounds in this uh, tournament. Shishi is supply stuck, waiting for catapults. Warden is creating distance. It's a shame that she doesn't have blink now, otherwise she could contest this expansion. But every shadow strike results in... A scroll of regen now. So that's not the worst thing. A player's forces are under attack. He wants to sneak across the tree line. <laughs> oh, Archmage dead! I didn't think this was this would be possible. Shadow Strike fan of knives combo. Oh my god! And this is close to level six now. And this <laughs> buys more time. Unbelievable! Is there another fan of knives? No, just right clicks. It's two peasant kills that give him level six. That might be the first one. Yes. Losing the berserker over it, underestimating the damage. Small mistake by Shishi. A little overwhelmed, maybe. 
He's holding gold. He's tacking to tier 2. Double income for Chimiko now. Archmage is gonna be back in a bit. And also he is tacking faster than Shishi. <laughs> One is coming in again. One Shadow Strike is level 6. Or is he waiting for the fan? <coughs> Doesn't want the clarity to be cancelled, that's why he's running away. Uh, nice save by Chimiko, he can't really hit them there. But now the damage, and that's level 6. Using the avatar already, yes! He needs a lot of corpses now, he gets 2. He gets 3. And that can do the damage. These spirits are invulnerable. And he will snowball so hard now. Because everything is red here. They can't be attacked by towers. N just need to keep the avatar safe. Oh, this is a slaughter. Genocide. <laughs> Great strategical move by Joshishi. How much can he do? More spirits. He needs more spirits. Lots of mercs. Huntress are coming in as well. Of course, the guard towers will kill them easily. Spirits, of course, don't last forever. The big threat is gone. Archmage is back with a heal scroll. He did underestimate the damage too. But this buys time for Shishi. So much time. T2 is finished. And he has 300 gold. A game on a knife's edge. Mountain King. One possible counter to a warden, but with level 1. It's hard. Real hard. But he's denying the mining. With his avatar go. Two more spirits. Oh, he's committing pretty hard. Warden goes for boots. And a second expansion. Haha! <laughs> Scouted by Chimiko though. Invis potion on the warden lurking looking for the Archmage while he's creating trouble here. Oh my god, so much multitasking. So good. He just wants to find the AM with boots. He can easily kill him. He knows that the Archmage is not here because he's not defending here. This fan of knives could hurt. And he's cleaning up the expo. Oh, he sees the Mountain King. This could be an insta gib Or oh, the Archmage. Uh, yeah, he can't tear this down. But you have to wait for what the Warden is doing here. Spirits are dominating the expansion. Finally surround, but Fan of Knives, yeah, Shadow Strike, right clicks, Mountain King, insta dead. No chance and more kills, resulting in more spirits. Wow, Shishi is executing this so well! He always has the answers. Finally level 3 on the Archmage, that took forever. It is such a... Oh! Okay, he can't eat. This Tree of Life was uh, a bad investment, but this expansion as well. He's trying so hard to get this to work. Now the spirits are all gone because the Avatar is expiring. But he has mana for the next one soon. Level 7 on the Warden. This is a commercial for Warcraft 3. Expansion halfway down. Fan of Knives or Avatar? Yeah, Fan! He wants the Archmage, but he has no mana anymore. It's so important that he kept the shop alive. Without all the clarities, he could have never done anything like it. And the main gold mine is gone. The main is gone, and all of a sudden Chimiko has no income while he's going to tier 3. This is nuts. Absolute madmen facing each other here. Both are undefeated in Nostalgia Battlefield. One of them will lose this status. Shadow Strike. He's going in! Fan of Knives! This is not enough damage! 
Archmage with the potion, but both heroes are super duper low. He's easily tearing down this one. Dryads now to dispel the water elementals. The mightiest weapon. She, she seems to have this in the back, but I said this before. This synergy of Fan of Knives, Corpses and Avatar, Mountain King is being threatened, but so is the Archmage, right clicks everywhere, can he go to the shop again? He can't! He loses the Archmage for the third time and the Mountain King for the second time, double kill for Shishi, is this, this must be the winner bracket final for Team Grubby, who in the hell would have thought this after five minutes in the game, where the Tower Rush hit him so hard and un predicted tier 3 is on the way no heroes anymore avatar creating more spirits and there is no income massive exodus from militia they have to carry now but how can you carry against a level 7 warden with fan of knives level 3 you can't gg bye Chemiko and Shishi carrying his team and there we see him and finally an emotion It's 5-0 Shishi. It's the winner bracket final for Team Grubby. Unbelievable game The game of the tournament with TBCBM versus Fly and Chemiko man losing his undefeated status losing the status of the carry for his team and despite Grubby going 2-0, Shishi with the Warden alone. Man, man, man. I think that Grubby was rarely so happy for the Raise Night Elf. Chat is going nuts. 1,300 viewers see a domination. <laughs> Unbelievable. Grubby, by the way, is live tickering here at Twitter. Carried again, great job. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Grubby is saying that Ring of Regeneration is also a big, big, big uh, key. Why this Warden was so uh, strong. Kept the shop alive for the Clarities, had the Ring for the region of the HP. But I am so impressed with Shishi's uh, decision making. We see some highlights here <coughs> from the Clan War. Yeah, this was the Book of the Dead that broke Grubby's neck. Shishi never overcommitted. He played this Warden play perfectly, and I've never seen him see the Warden play that good. Usually he's one of the guys who sticks to the Demon Hunter. Here we see the win of WFZ over Karma, which was to be expected. But Karma did a lot better against WFZ than we thought. Held on a lot longer, did some serious damage as we can see here, but in the end, the undead was just so strong. And uh, yeah, the tier 3 undead seems to be too strong against Night Elves currently. So the first team in the playoffs is Team Grubby. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, the, the the hero kills later on. There was nothing to do against this. This tournament is so rad. But I want to see the highlights of uh, Moon vs WFC because that fight was very interesting. This this team war was epic, absolute epic. I mean, the game of Moon versus Shishi was all uh, was also great. Three amazing games in a row. They really like this karma play here, I guess. Yeah, that's Moon versus WFZ. Where I thought that everything is over for Moon already because the fight prior to that was really good for the undead. But Moon never gave up. He doesn't want to lose the game on his hometown and the Demon Hunter carrying the win. 
carrying his army to the win. Bears did crazy damage against the heroes afterwards, and there, yeah, it was over already. Fork Lightning, double kill. Moon wins, and WFZ disappoints. Shishi versus Moon. Mountain Giants MVP. What they blocked, the damage they endured. Was fantastic. Taunt used almost perfectly the entire game. And I always thought Moon had this. It's turn around after turn around after turn around. That was by far the best team war we had so uh, this the past two days. And yeah, we see Metamorphosis, Superman, Super Shishi racing through the Talon army. No chance for the Tinker, no chance for Moon at this point anymore. And then it was all between Shishi and Shimiko. Both came in undefeated in this uh, series. One could keep the status and it was Shishi. He, he went for a Warden, expected an expansion by Shimiko, cancelled the expansion by Shimiko, who then transitioned into a Tower Rush, which worked really well. I think... A, Problem was that he didn't kill the engine of war, which bought a lot of time for Shishi. But the dance on a knife, uh, or the, yeah, I don't know. Dance on a knife's edge for this Archmage man, living close to the edge. But one warden to rule them all, man. We've seen this since the European qualifier for WCA in 2015, where it kind of started that we saw crazy Night Elf versus uh, human games on Echo Outs. There it was, a Demon Hunter, but then Lolliet came in and revolutionized this matchup with exactly this warden and fan of knives and avatar play. He plays it with Blink and not uh, Shadow Strike, but Shadow Strike was really key here because he got so many hero kills. I think five. And he bought so much time with them. Even if it just killed level two heroes. Uh, it was those 90 seconds. That he used to. To get the mana back up. To get some moon juice again. And there. It was all over. For Tumiko. Incredible team war. We will continue with. Uh, another uh, master of the warden. It's going to be Law Lyad. Verse, uh, or Team TH versus Team Law Lyad. The players here in those teams are, um, of course, TH Focus and the hero of yesterday, TBCBM, who all killed Team Fly with Undead Banshee strategies. On the other side, Team Remind, who surprised yesterday, Remind, Law Lyad, and so in the all Korean team. So we go into a little break here. I think we all deserve it. Feel free to check out the stream des description. There are many ways to support this uh, stream. Amazon affiliate links, uh, subscriber links, PayPal links, whatever. Uh, feel free to follow everything you find there. And uh, take a look at Hive Workshop because they are also awesome for custom games and stuff. So see you in a bit.